Thanks for joining Best Practices for Managing Grain. Before we get started, a little about us. HTS Ag provides high-tech solutions for agriculture. We originally got our start in 1995 and we're celebrating our 25th anniversary this year. We are technology integrators. We take solutions from multiple different vendors and we're able to provide a solution at the farm gate to utilize the technology and make farmers more profitable. We're one of the premier channel partners for OP Grain Systems in the United States. The goal when we're managing grain is just simply uniform moisture. We'd really like the whole bin of grain to be the same moisture top to bottom. The reality or the problem is that we end up with uneven moisture. We get layers in the grain bin and we've got multiple different things going on causing that. We can be pulling different hybrids into the grain from different fields. We can have really dry air come in the bottom of the bin and overdry the bottom of the bin without getting the top of the bin quite dry enough. And that can be caused by running the fans at the wrong time, or it could be caused by not having a big enough fan on the bin or enough airflow through the bin. What do we need to do to fix it? Well, simply put, we just operate the fans when it's beneficial for the grain in the bin. I know that seems like an oversimplification, but the reality is that if we can simply operate them only at the correct time, not only do we save fan run hours and save electricity, we also can do a better job of conditioning that grain and getting it more uniform. Let's take a look at what the effect of humidity is on grain shrinkage and drying. So if we look right here, if we want that 14, 15% corn, and we look up from there to what that equals out to, we're in that 70%, 65% maybe range of uh, humidity is the perfect, um, perfect quantity or perfect quality of air to put through that grain. Now let's take a look at what that looks like over a period of time. This is, just pick a spot on the map and watch that spot as we go through several slides here. This is humidity at uh, 4 p.m. on the 27th of March. This is 9 p.m. same day. 1 a.m. the next day. 1 p.m. 1 a.m. the following day. 7 a.m. 11 a.m. 12 p.m. 3 p.m. 6 p.m. 1 a.m. the following day, 6 a.m., 7 p.m., 6 a.m. the following day, 9 a.m., 1 p.m. As we look through all of those different slides, you can really see that the humidity changes quite a bit in any given area. So if we're really shooting at this range right in here for what we want to get done, it's hard to do that if we just turn the fan on and leave it on. So back to my original statement, run the fans only when it's beneficial. Now a few things to note, EMC drying or equilibrium moisture content drying, natural air, we operate the fans when the relative humidity of the outside air is at the correct level to dry the grain to the target moisture content. So if we run the fans when the air is very dry, we end up over drying the bottom of the bin and maybe not getting the top of the bin dried. Now we talked about airflow being another key element here. Let's talk some general rules of thumb here. One horsepower per 1,000 bushel is one CFM per bushel. That'll work for less than 22% moisture corn. Now one horsepower per 500 bushel will get you two CFM. That would work for corn that's over 22%. That's a lot of airflow, a lot of bins probably don't have that. More likely you're going to have one horsepower per 2,000 bushel and be at a 0.5 CFM or maybe even less than that. You could have all the way down to a 0.25 CFM. If we get down to 0.25 CFM, we're not really gonna be able to do much in the way of drying the grain. All we're really going to do is change the temperature of the grain. So keep that in mind. If we get the air in the, gr in the grain bin and we don't allow for the air to come out of the grain bin, all we've really done was give the electric company a bunch of money and not gotten our benefit out of it. So it's important that we also have roof vents to allow the air to come back out the top of the bin as we push it in the bottom with the fans. So one square foot per 1000 CFMs of airflow or one square foot per horsepower of fan is a general rule of thumb there. Keep in mind a 15 inch square roof vent is one and a half square feet. 
Let's talk about what the costs are to overdry the bottom of the bin. Now this is figuring 350 corn, $1.50 per gallon propane, and 12 cent per kilowatt hour for electricity. I realize that those rates may fluctuate and vary, but this is gonna give you a, a general idea of what we're talking about. Now we talked about possibly overdrying the bottom third or quarter of the bin. So take your total storage that you have. If you have, let's say 150,000 in storage and we overdry the bottom third of that bit, all of those bins by two to three points, we could look here at that 50,000 bushel line and let's be somewhere in here of eight to twelve thousand dollars that it cost us to overdry the bottom of that bin. Temperature of the grain is one of the most important things. I know moisture is what we all pay attention to, but temperature is something that we really need to manage as well. For safe storage, we want to take the grain down to 40 degrees. At that temperature, the adult insects will go into dormancy. The larva and eventually the eggs will all die after enough exposure to that low of a temperature. We do not suggest storing grain below freezing for an extended period of time for a few reasons. Number one, if you freeze the corn, the moisture is not going to move out of the grain. And number two, if you freeze the grain, when it warms back up, it's going to sweat. So you can actually end up with a false high reading as you're hauling it to town. And we've got even some potential to freeze kernels that are very wet and crack the kernels open, causing some degrading condition of the grain. Ideally, we want to go into the spring with the grain in that 40 degree range. How long can we store grain? Well, with corn, the trick here is we either need it cool or we need it dry. You can see if we look here, even at 90 degrees, if we're down in that 12 or 13 percent moisture, we can store it for a really long time. On the opposite side of that, if we look over here at 24 percent moisture and 90 degrees, you've got about three days. But even taking that 24 percent moisture and just going down to 35 degrees, we took three days to 39 days. Now, if we can also dry it a few points and we get back over here to 16 or 18 percent in that 35 to 40 degree range, we've got a really long time that we can store that grain and keep it in good condition. The chart looks very similar when we're talking about soybeans. Very dry soybeans, even at a high temperature, probably no chance of spoilage. If we take high temperature and we get to wet soybeans, we're talking again a matter of days before we're gonna have spoilage. Also, even very wet, I would say, 14, 15%, if we get it very cool, we can handle that, that level of moisture in the soybeans and not have the potential for storage. Now, all of these charts are based on the idea that we're going to have a low dry matter loss, clean, high quality grain, no broken or cracked kernels, all of those things need to be managed well also. So automatic aeration that we were discussing earlier this is a chart of what it looks like. Now I'm going to try and break this down. There's a lot going on on this chart, trying to help you guys understand what we're looking at here. As we look at this yellow line, this would be the average temperature of the grain in the bin. The green band here would be the range of temperatures in the bin. And this red line would be the average daily ambient air temp. So you can see as the air temp goes up, when it gets above our average, we turn the fan off. When that gets below, we actually, this blue is indicating that the fan is running. We turn the fan on and run to cool that grain down. And you can see there's a significant cool down there. When the temperature goes back up, the fan's off, comes back down. Each day, we start running the fan less and less as we also tighten up this band and we get our average temperature to lower along this yellow line. We get the range to come in tighter as we go through the year. So that we end up running to aerate the grain, we end up running very little once we actually get it in the condition that we want it in. That's it. That's the overview of managing your grain. If you have questions, you can contact us on the phone at 800 741 3305 or shoot us an email support at htsag.com. Thank you.